Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 4th of September. Indian Army Chief says talks can resolve border row with China. Monsoon floods add to misery in Pakistan's Karachi city. And Sri Lanka tows super tanker away from coast after fire. And now for all the details. India's Army Chief General Manoj Mukund Narawne said on Friday that the situation with China along the de facto border in Ladakh region has been tense. But he was confident that the ongoing standoff could be resolved through talks. India's Army Chief General Manoj Mukund Narawne said on Friday that the situation with China along the de facto border line of actual control or LAC has been tense, but he was confident that the ongoing standoff in the western Himalayas could be resolved through talks. General Narawne was in Ladakh to review the situation at a time when Indian troops have thwarted Chinese army's attempts to transgress in multiple areas of the region. He said India is continuously engaging with China at the military and diplomatic level to resolve issues. For the last two, three months, the situation has been a little tense. But we have continuously been engaging with China, both at the military and the diplomatic level. These engagements are ongoing and will continue in the future also. And uh, we are very sure that uh, through this medium of talks, whatever differences we have will be resolved and we will ensure that uh, the status quo is not changed and we are able to safeguard our interests. Meanwhile, the exiled Tibetan community living in India's hill town of Shimla cheered and felicitated soldiers of the Special Frontier Force of the Indian Army on Friday as they left for the India-China border in Himachal Pradesh and Ladakh as part of precautionary deployments amid the tense situation. The Special Frontier Force recruits mostly from Tibetan refugees, hundreds of thousands of whom have made India their home since the Dalai Lama fled Tibet following a failed uprising against Chinese rule in 1959. At least one terrorist was killed and one soldier was injured in an encounter in Baramula district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Friday, the Indian Army said. The encounter broke out after security forces had launched a cordon and search operation in Patan area of Baramula following specific information about the presence of terrorists. The search operation turned into a gunfight after the terrorists fired upon a search party of the forces who retaliated. Operations were still underway till the last reports came in. India accuses neighbouring Pakistan of sheltering and training terrorists to use as proxy to mount attacks on Indian soil. Moving on. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan's top aide, Lieutenant General retired Asim Salim Bajwa, announced his resignation on Thursday shortly after debunking allegations of corruption against him in a rebuttal that was posted on Twitter. Bajwa, however, said that he will continue to serve as the chairman of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor Authority. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan's top aide, Lieutenant General, retired Asim Salim Bajwa, said he will step down as the special assistant to the Prime Minister on information and broadcasting. The former chief military spokesperson said this while talking to a private news channel, while adding that he will hand in his resignation to Prime Minister Khan on Friday and request him to relieve him of his duties as his aide. Bajwa's decision to step down followed his detailed Twitter rebuttal to the false and incorrect allegations made against him and his family for assets concealment. An investigative report by a Pakistani journalist alleged properties and business worth millions of Bajwa and his close family members in Pakistan and abroad. 
Bajwa, however, said that he will continue his work as chairman of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor or CPEC Authority, which he said was a priority with the Premier. CPEC has seen China pledge over 60 billion US dollars for infrastructure projects in Pakistan, central to China's wider Belt and Road Initiative to develop land and sea trade routes in Asia and beyond. More on news from Pakistan. Karachi, Pakistan's largest city, has been one of the worst hit by the urban flooding as the country has seen some of the most intense monsoon rains in years. Locals have said government has completely failed in tackling the situation as they were left stranded due to dilapidated and ill-maintained drainage systems. Karachi, a sprawling metropolis of more than 20 million people, has been one of the worst hit by the urban flooding as Pakistan has seen some of the most intense monsoon rains in years with more than 189 people killed across the country. Streets turned to rivers as the sheer volume of water quickly overloaded Karachi's dilapidated and ill-maintained drainage system. Locals said the city's main thoroughfares did not cope much better, submerged under several feet of water, leaving residents still stranded in their homes in parts of the city. They said the government has completely failed them. इस बारिश से पहले कई दफा यहां पे रोड डालने की कोशिश हुई और हर दफा हमने इनको बताया नुकासी है आपका पानी कहां निकलेगा किस तरह निकलेगा इन्होंने कोई जवाब नहीं दिया ऊपर से कारपेंटिंग करके चले गए अभी आप सूरचाल हमारी पीछे देख सकते हैं इस वक्त ना जाने कितने लोगों के लाखों करोड़ों रुपए का नुकसान हुआ है टैक्स पेयर लोग हैं एज द रेन्स नाउ बिगिन टू सबसाइड द हार्ड वर्क ऑफ क्लीनिंग अप द डेब्रिस एंड रीबिल्डिंग विल बिगिन बट एक्सपर्ट्स बिलीव इन अ सिटी एज डिवाइडेड एंड एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिवली ब्रोकन एज कराची that will be easier said than done. In news from Afghanistan, the Indra-Afghan talks is all set to begin in Qatar, which is intended to lay out a roadmap to a future Afghanistan and end the deadly conflict that has gripped the nation for the past two decades. Ahead of the talks, the UN Secretary General's Special Representative for Afghanistan, Deborah Lyons, has called for a humanitarian ceasefire to be announced in the country. UN Secretary General's Special Representative for Afghanistan, Deborah Lyons, while briefing the UN Security Council on Thursday, called for a humanitarian ceasefire to be announced in the country as all eyes are set on intra-Afghan talks set to begin soon. Highlighting key developments around peace, human rights, the humanitarian situation and other pressing issues, Lyons said that a humanitarian ceasefire was crucial to ensure that humanitarian efforts are delivered. This came as negotiating teams of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan and the Taliban prepared to sit in Doha for talks that are aimed to end the deadly conflict that has gripped nation for past two decades. Continue to call on all parties to reduce the level of violence. Along with many Afghans, we hope that one of the first items on the agenda of intra-Afghan negotiations will indeed be a humanitarian ceasefire. For Afghanistan's most vulnerable people, the stakes could not be higher. I urge all member states to amplify this call as the negotiations begin. The UN briefing followed hours after Afghanistan's National Security Council confirmed that the government nearly completed the release of Taliban prisoners on the group's list except for a half dozen prisoners about whom Afghanistan's international partners have reservations. In news from Nepal, a day after locals and police clashed over pulling of a chariot in Nepal as part of a generations-old ritual, Shama Puja or worship for forgiveness was held on Friday in Lalitpur city. Clashes which left several injured in Lalitpur on Thursday erupted after locals attempted a chariot procession of a deity despite ban on public gatherings imposed to fight the coronavirus pandemic. A day after locals and police clashed over pulling of a chariot of local deity, Rato Machindranath, Kshama Puja or worship for forgiveness was held on Friday in Nepal's Lalitpur city. Clashes between deities and police on Thursday erupted after locals attempted an annual chariot procession despite ban on public gatherings imposed to fight the coronavirus pandemic. 
Despite the ban about 2,000 residents poured into the major thoroughfare of Lalatpur near Nepal's capital Kathmandu to pull the chariot of the rain god Rato Machindranath, a ritual that has been celebrated for countless generations. Police had to resort to tear gas shelling and use of water cannon to break up the religious rally, leaving several people injured. In the aftermath of the clash, the chariot in the middle of the road tilted dangerously, less than 100 meters from where it was kept for nearly two months. Nepal has had over 42,800 confirmed cases of the coronavirus since the pandemic began and at least 257 deaths. Moving on. Sri Lanka began towing a fully loaded super tanker that had caught fire off its east coast after it began drifting towards land, a spokesman for the Navy said on Friday. Sri Lanka, with assistance from Indian ships, stepped up its firefighting mission for the second day on Friday. There were 23 crew on board, one of whom is presumed dead, while the rest have been rescued from the ship. Sri Lanka on Friday stepped up its firefighting mission on a fully loaded super tanker on fire with multiple naval vessels spraying seawater at the ablaze new diamond tanker. The fire was still raging on the new diamond tanker carrying about 2 million barrels of oil, said a spokesman for the Navy of the Indian Ocean nation. There were 23 crew on board, one of whom is presumed dead, while the rest have been rescued from the ship. According to preliminary information from the ship's crew, the Filipino seamen on board had died in a boiler explosion. Ships from the Russian Navy and Indian Coast Guard have been assisting in the firefighting. The Indian Navy and the Indian Coast Guard were working together to control the fire. The fire that broke out in the engine room on Thursday morning had spread to the bridge of the ship chartered by Indian Oil Corporation or IOC. The ship had sailed from in Kuwait and was heading for the Indian port of Paradip. Making things a bit easy for health workers amid coronavirus pandemic, oxygen monitors called pulse oximeters have proven a great help in India's capital, New Delhi, as they monitor the health of virus patients from afar. The patients send their readings from the medical device and the frontline workers in hospitals log the data to make sure they are above the prescribed 95 mark. Health workers of Indian capital New Delhi are monitoring the health of coronavirus patients from afar using WhatsApp and a 13 US dollar oxygen monitor called pulse oximeter. The patients who live in narrow by lanes of New Delhi send health workers the two digit readings from the medical device and the frontline workers log the data checking to make sure they are above the prescribed 95 mark. Those who fall below can be referred to hospitals. Sir, this is काफी हमें सहायता मिली है क्योंकि जब पेशेंट के पास जब नहीं था तो पता नहीं चलता था इनका ऑक्सीजन लेवल कितना है और पेशेंट को इन्फेक्शन हो रहा है क्या चांसेस हो रहे हैं हाई रिस्क में जाने वाला है क्या पता नहीं चलता था लेकिन अब हमें पहले पता चल जाता है तो हम पेशेंट को सेफली हॉस्पिटल रेफर कर देते हैं। Delhi government has so far distributed about 30,000 pulse oximeters for free, putting them at the heart of a plan to isolate most asystematic or mildly systematic coronavirus patients in their homes. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.